Hi friends, today I'm going to be sharing some spooky books just in time for Halloween. So first I want to apologize for not uploading a YouTube video for so long. It's because I've been really burnt out in general on bookish things and also because of school and I'm slowly going to be returning back to the bookish world and I'm really excited for that. In the meantime that I've been away from booktube, I have been consuming some thrillers and murder mysteries in the form of both books and TV shows so today I'm going to be recommending some of those to you today. And just a fair warning that some of these shows and books have some heavy topics or dark dark topics that you may want to be aware of before getting into them. So the first book I want to talk about is All These Bodies by Kendar Blake and this is a recent release I think in September, just this past September. So this one is a YA thriller and I did rate it a 4 out of 5 stars. So set in the 1950s, the backdrop of a small town brings us to the attention of Michael Jensen, the son of the sheriff who is tiptoeing around the biggest news of the small sleepy town of an alleged murderer, a young teenage girl of 16 people. There is something about Marie Catherine Hale that draws Michael and the readers in, something odd yet intriguing. So the current case that has the small town in such an uproar is the murder of the Carson family. Both parents and their teenage son, who is a friend of Michael's, were found laying side by side on their living room floor, bloodless, except for Marie, our alleged murderess, standing covered in blood from head to toe. Another odd thing is that usually all the victims are found murdered together, so if there's a group of two people, they were usually found already murdered together. But in this case with the Carson family, the only person that wasn't murdered was their little toddler daughter that was left behind. I found in this book that it followed like the slower pace of true crime documentaries and TV shows, but that didn't take away from the overall book. But following this book from Michael's point of view, he's a teenage boy who can be easily influenced by people and especially a mysterious girl. However, he does have smarts to him and that does make the pacing better but even more there is a supernatural twist to marie and while reading scenes with her i was freaked out a little bit because she was kind of creepy to me but answers to the murder mystery are given by the end i was a bit disappointed at the ending but i still loved the characters and the overall plot and if i could summarize this book into one sentence it would be a ya horror mystery blend that takes you through a journey of what is the truth and what may be lurking in the shadows sorry for looking down so much it's because i have my notes in front of me of the plot and what my thoughts were on each thing so the next book i do have to show you is one i absolutely loved and it is a part of a small trilogy and it is a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson so this is the first book i rated each book five out of five stars the second book is good girl bad blood and the third book is as good as dead so this series is a YA mystery thriller, but I'll only describe the first book. Start off in a fictional town called Little Clinton in England, and this time we're following a teenage girl, Pippa, who is working on her final year project. I'm really not familiar with how secondary school works in England, but I'm assuming it's equivalent of Canadian high school, which is grade 12. So this is her final year project. Pip's final project is focused on a closed case that happened in Little Kilton five years ago of the murder of Andy Bell by Sal Singh. This entire town believes that Sal murdered Andy. Pip finds out that her small town holds many secrets and as she's uncovering them, someone in town wants them to stay hidden. So in this book, there are so many twists and turns. And not just only this one, but as the series as a whole. I loved following Pip's story. She's very capable, she's really smart, and has great detective skills, like real detective, and she's really brave. In this first book, Pip realizes that she's on the trail of something big, and the revelation of the truth follows her throughout book two and three. So I really like how that carries out. One unique thing about this book series is that Pip does create something that I love, which is podcasts. During her final year project, she is developing and investigating Andy Bell's murder, and with that she has case notes and all of those documentations that she finds, 
she creates a podcast out of it. I personally love it when books have those little details added to them and we do f see those case files throughout the book in between the narrative portions. Holly Jackson's writing style is very easy to read and if you pay really close attention there are hints what may seem like a useless clue but has a huge impact later on in the story and so I absolutely recommend that you pick up this series if you want a quick page turner, fantastic characters, and investigative work wrapped all in one series. Okay so we're finally getting into the adult thrillers. I still do have one more YA thriller at the end but let's get into the adult thrillers for you all. This one is Verity by Colleen Hoover and I do believe Verity is her first thriller novel. It's a departure from her usual intensely emotional romance books and Verity does have some elements of that still but it's more focused on of course the mystery and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So with Verity we begin following Lowen Ashley who is a small time writer and signs a deal to finish off author's popular series. The catch is Lowen will then need to go through Verity's old research papers in order to finish her unpublished book at the Crawford House, which is Verity's house. Lowen then finds herself living in the same home as Jeremy, who is Verity's husband, and Verity at this time is still alive. She is not dead. <laughs> she is quite ill from a severe car accident she had and Jeremy is taking care of Verity. But once Loan gets into Verity's home office and goes through all the paperwork and mind you the office is chaotic and so disorganized that Loan finds herself stumbling on a unpublished autobiography about Verity herself. And there's some strange confessions in the manuscript pages that she finds and this also includes the details of the day that Jeremy and Verity's daughter died. And let me tell you like what is being written in that manuscript or autobiography manuscript is messed up. So then Lowen doesn't know if she should tell Jeremy about what she found and so for now she keeps it as a secret to herself. But lo and behold, Lauren also finds herself developing feelings for Jeremy. So there's that dilemma for her. So my thoughts on Verity was it's a book that will creep you out, but you cannot put it down because you just need to know what happens next. There are also moments that made me pause myself and become a little paranoid. I'm like, who is Verity? What is she doing? Is she still sick? <laughs> I think if you really want the full experience, you have to go into this book blind and I think that's the best way to read it. I mainly went into this book blind and what I'm describing to you is like really within the first few chapters of the book so I did not spoil anything for you guys. If you do want a fast page turner adult thriller and moments that can scare you if you read this one at night, pick up Verity. Okay, so this next one is one that I listen to on audiobook and I don't really listen to audiobooks that often. This one is The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I can describe it as an atmospheric adult mystery thriller and I did rate this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is just how I just described it. It's really atmospheric. It is a slow burn mystery but the payoff is so worth it. And The Guest List is set on an island off the coast of Ireland for a fancy wedding where a group of people are intertwined with each other and on this island and each character has their own history with each other and as it turns out it's very complicated. The groom is really charming, he's handsome and TV star rising in, in his fame. The bride is also smart, ambitious and a magazine publisher. They're essentially a power couple but they also have their own skeletons in their closets. When the reception begins the island has a storm brewing not just metaphorically but actually brewing. At one point the lights go out and a body is discovered on the island and the kicker is the murderers among the wedding guests. I really really enjoyed this one. It was a really nice transition book for people trying to get into adult thrillers so if you're looking for that this is the one for you but I also do recommend you read or listen to the audiobook because the narration for this has different voice actors for each character and that makes it so much more immersive. I do think this thriller is a nice easy one to go into if you're looking to start adult thrillers. It's just a content warning for you to know is content warning for self-harm so consider that before going to this one. 
last but not least, we have another YA thriller. And I do have a physical copy of it. It's Sadie by Courtney Summers. I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So with Sadie, this one also follows the format of a podcast show and I love that how it's carried throughout the book. So Sadie is about a missing girl who is on a quest for revenge for her murdered little sister. Sadie herself didn't grow up easily. Her life was pretty hard even before her sister was murdered. They were both living in an isolated small town and it was hard for Sadie. But the thing with her sister's murder is the police didn't investigate properly and so Sadie takes the investigation into her own hands and she hits the road to try to find her sister's killer. So how the podcast begins is when a radio host, Wes McRae, hears Sadie's story and starts to track down Sadie down himself to help find her before the worst can happen to her because she has been declared missing. Sadie herself isn't a likable character, but she's not at fault for that. It is a really good page turner as well, but it's also a sad story on top of that. Be aware of content warning of mentions of past view. Overall, CD is a raw, compelling read and it can shine insight on someone's motivations behind their actions. A really nice one as well. And I love this cover. It's really simple but pretty. So on to the TV shows. So before I get into the shows, I have to recommend a YouTuber if you're into true crime. Her name's Bailey Syrian here on YouTube and she just tells true crime stories like it's the latest gossip. I love her uh, The Murder Mystery Makeup Monday video so much and I just wanted to give her a little shout out. She did inspire me to make this video a bit. I'll know what I'm going to be recommending first for a thriller kind of TV show is Squid Game. So this one is pretty much the most talked about TV show right now. Super popular on Netflix and I'm sure tons of people are going to be dressing up as Squid Game here for Halloween. Heard of Squid Game. Squid Game. This is a series that takes place in South Korea. So it is a Korean show. I do recommend you listen to the Korean audio with English subtitles. So again, it takes place in South Korea. We're following Seong Gyun who is deeply in debt and he's trying to gamble his way out of debt. Of course, that does not work out in his favor and he does have a mysterious offer that comes up and Seong Jiun accepts it and he finds himself in a contest with 456 other players who are also in deep financial debt. They all put their lives at risk to play a series of children's games for the chance to win 45.6 billion won in South Korean money. So that's the prize money and that's the equivalent of 3.8 million US dollars. Quite a lot of money that they are willing to risk their lives for and it's really a game of life or death. If you have not watched this one, it is graphic <laughs> but it's really addicting and it does speak on the consequences of capitalism and how that affects our lives. But it is a really great TV show to binge watch before Halloween. The next TV show I want to talk about is a mini series that is on Netflix as well. I just recently finished this over like three nights. <laughs> It's Midnight Mass. I'm just gonna read the description that's on Netflix. A small, isolated island community whose existing divisions are amplified by the return of a disgraced young man and the arrival of a charismatic priest. This is one that's slow burn, there's a lot of monologuing, but the payoff is worth it. The characters are really, really great in that you'll find characters you love, characters you hate, and then characters you don't know what to think about. It does speak on the aspect of different religions and the consequences of life and overall trying to redeem oneself, but the island does end up imploding on itself. It's highly recommended though. There is a supernatural twist, but I would leave that for you to find out. And I'm sorry, the lighting's really, really bad right now. Feeling like this when the sun's going down, so. The last TV show I wanna share with you guys is You, season three. I'll share the description of season one. So You follows the bookshop manager, Joe Goldberg, He's a narcissistic and sociopathic killer who falls in love with aspiring author Beck. Through truly disturbing methods, Joe starts a relationship with Beck, but it all goes terribly downhill from the start. <laughs> yeah, that was the description of season one, but this latest season that just came out, season three, was honestly just so good. There were some new characters I disliked, but I really appreciate the moments of humor that we had throughout the season, and I guess this might be spoilers, but if you don't want to listen, you can skip to this timestamp on the screen. Overall, Joe and Love are <laughs> just the best together. I love them together, but you know, at the end. Even throughout season three, Joe is still what he is at heart. 
an obsessive serial killer and it's never a dull moment while watching him. So if you haven't caught up or even started you, the TV show, it is another fun TV series with the murder and a lot of thrills and some nice lessons about who you should or should not allow into your life. So that's everything I wanted to share with you all today. I won't say when I will upload another video because I don't even know my upload schedule at this point. I hope to be around more on booktube. Anyways, comment down below a thriller book or TV show that you've recently enjoyed or love in general. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a big thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.